we'll explore all of this as we go. Um, but just to connect this to what we were talking about a moment ago, here's all of the client side assets. Um, and you can see there's already some CSS files here and an image and some JavaScript stuff that we'll get to later. But that's all of our client side assets. Um, we'll worry about the views, the EJS stuff in a moment. We're not going to worry about that yet. Um, and we're not going to worry about anything in server yet. But both of these folders focus on things on the server side. Um, let's start in server.js. And we're going to write just a little bit of code together. We're going to write the simplest, one of the simplest web apps we can possibly write. But I think this is cool because then we'll run it and we'll have like our first web application. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use the Express Node module um, in our web applications. And so that's the first line of code here we're going to add. We're going to import the Express module, um, which exports. When we import it, the module exports the Express function, which we're going to need. So we're going to assign a reference to that function to the variable express, and we'll say require express. This is similar to what we did when we required .env um, or when we required MongoDB. Those are two other node modules we used earlier in this unit. Every time we use a node module, that node module has to be specified in our package file. There's a lot of stuff here in the package file, which we're going to focus on mostly later. <laughs> for now, I just want to point out that, well, first of all, I've built the package file for you. Um, and we'll, we'll examine different aspects of it later. But you'll notice inside the package file, there is a um, attribute called dependencies. Um, and one of our dependencies is express. Okay. Um, so we specified at least a minimum version of Express that we're going to be using. All of these other dependencies we're going to be adding over the, the next few days. Um, but for now, we're focused on this Express one. So we're going to require the Express module. That's going to import it. The variable Express will, its value will be a reference to the Express function. So the next thing we want to do is actually create our Express web application. Um, and so we're going to do that. We're going to invoke the Express function to create an Express application. So I like to name the variable app for application, and we'll assign it the value returned from calling that Express function. Invoking that Express function, whose reference we obtained up here, um, is what actually creates our application. All right, now we're going to use this variable app a lot um, to do different things. Um, first thing we want to do is when the user specifies our URL that goes to the server, we want to respond to that HTTP request um, with like our web page. Okay, so we're going to use. Um, a get method and a path to do that. So we're going to pass a path. Our path is just going to be like the root, which is just a single slash. But we're going to pass a path and a callback function to the get method. When the client makes an HTTP get request, to the specified path, the callback function is executed. Ex executed. This is what we mean by an event express being an event driven framework. Okay. So here's the syntax for that. On our express application, we're going to invoke the get method. And we're going to specify the path we're interested in, which is just the slash, like the root. And then we're going to specify a callback, a function. We could right here specify a function name and elsewhere write that function. So we could specify um, a function name right here. 
But again, guess what? We don't usually do that, right? We use arrow functions instead. So we're instead going to write our function right here. This is super common. We're going to be doing this like all the time. Um, so let's see what that looks like. We're going to do the two parameters, req, that's the HTTP request, and res, that's the HTTP response. Those are our parameters. There's our arrow function, curly bracket to, to start the function body. And I'm going to add some notes here because this is all new to us. The req parameter references the HTTP request object which has a number of properties, and we'll use those over time. Um, but let's actually log one of those right now. So we're going to do console.log. Let's log the path property. So req dot, we can see there's a whole bunch of different stuff here, one of which is path. So we're going to log the path specified in the HTTP request. Then we have to specify the response that we're going to send back. So the res parameter references the HTTP response object. So we'll do res.send. The send method is going to send our response. And our response is going to start off being super simple. We're simply going to respond with a string, hello world. Okay, not even HTML, just a string, hello world. Question for you all. Where will this log message be displayed? No. Good, that, that's what I was hoping you were going to say, so I appreciate, thank you for stepping up and doing that. It, why won't it be displayed in the developer tools in Chrome? Yeah, this code runs on the server. This is server side code. So when we say console.log on the server side, it's going to be displayed in the terminal. It's going to be displayed here in VS Code, not in Chrome. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're debugging too, right? We now have software running in two different places. We have two different consoles we have to look at. It starts to get confusing. All right. We're going to add a couple more lines of code. This will be exciting. Is the bell going to ring in like 20 seconds? No? Is the lights off? I feel like class went way too fast today. We have plenty of time. All right, I need to reboot the lights. All right, that's strange. Hmm. Still like, a, ooh, it's the assembly schedule. They're working in your room okay? Huh, interesting. All right. Anyway, um, back on track. So, um... Second question, or not so much a question, I guess more of just a statement here. When we invoke this get method, we are simply providing an association between an endpoint, a path, and a function. We're basically telling our Express app, hey, when the user, when there's a request made for this endpoint, invoke this function. This code is not running until that request is made. We're, by invoking the get method, we're just providing an association between this um, path and this function. This is part of the challenge, the other challenge, the whole asynchronous challenge, right? We're used to writing code that just sequentially executes. There might be loops and conditionals and stuff, but here we're going to be doing a lot more of like writing code that's like going to be run later based on some event. So that's something to keep in mind. We're going to see how to do that probably tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to, we're just going to start with this one for now. Yeah. No, that's a, a good, we're going to work our way up to that. Um, cool. So we provided this association between a path 
and a function we want to run. So now we're going to actually start our server. We're going to start our web application. We're going to start the server on port 8080. Okay, that shouldn't be in use on whatever computer you're using. And the way we do that is we invoke the listen method on our express application. We specify a port number, 8080. And then surprise, surprise, we specify a reference to a function. So we'll use another arrow function here. And um, this is basically just the function that will be invoked when our server starts. And all we want to do is print a message so we know the server started. So we'll do console.log server is listening on HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. Okay. That's the URL that all of us are about to use to see our web application. Before this works, we need to install all of our node modules. So go ahead and open up a new terminal in VS Code and just type npm install. And it's gonna run through and install all the node modules, um, not just uh, Express, but all the ones we'll need throughout this, this part of the unit. Once you've done that, then we can actually run things. Um, one thing I want to show you is inside the .vs code folder, I've created for us a launch.json file. This launch.json file specifies what should be done when we choose like start debugging or run without debugging or we press the play button here, which runs our code. Um, it will look at the launch.json. It will see there are a couple different configurations here. Um, and so it will actually start um, our node application. And it will do some connections with like Chrome um, to launch in there. Uh, and so remember, you got to use a different Chrome profile, though, if you want to use the tools. Um, so I'm just going to say run without debugging. I thought I'd see the output. There we go. So I, I had closed it, so I had to go back and click on Debug Console. So we can see um, that we've started our application. It's the debuggers attached, some other stuff. We'll talk more about this node mon thing later. All this stuff will make sense throughout the next several days. But here's the message we put in. Server is listening on HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. You can control click on this link to open it up in Chrome. Yeah. Oh, just uh, close it. Like, it'll be fine. So if I hit control and do that, like hit control, click on the link. I'm going to move my windows where we can all see it. That's what you should see in Chrome. It should just say, hello world. Did it work? Yes. 